Good morning. Welcome to Corpus Christi as we celebrate the Eucharist together on this 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our presider this morning will be Father John. As we begin, we will sing, Blessed are the pure in heart, and the words can be found below in the description or the comments section. Please join us in singing. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I'd just like to welcome all of you as you gather to celebrate with us online here this morning as we celebrate the 14th Sunday of Ordinary Time. A number of our churches in our parish of Corpus Christi have, have had Mass uh, this morning or participating in Mass at this time. Um, those of us here in Kentville and also in Windsor, uh, a little bit more is involved in organizing with the larger crowd, so we're going to attempt to do our best to uh, pull things together for next weekend. So please bear with us and uh, pray for all of us. The gospel today, Jesus says, come to me and learn from me, for I am humble in heart. And so as we prepare to celebrate this Eucharist, we pause and acknowledge our need for forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ Christ have mercy. mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glory you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to be. Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated on on us. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the 
Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy, for on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim, and the war horse from Jerusalem. And the warrior's bow, bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you are not in the flesh, you are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. If the Spirit of God who raises Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, 
you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. He continued, all things have been handed over to me by my Father, And no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Once upon a time, there was a young prince. He was very handsome, except for one thing. He had a crooked back. This birth defect, it caused him great sorrow. It also kept him from being the kind of prince that he really wanted to be for his people. One day, the prince's father, the king, asked the best sculptor sculptor in his kingdom to make a statue of the prince. It should portray him, however, not with a crooked back, but with a straight back. The king wanted his son to see himself as he could be. When the sculptor finished the statue, it was truly magnificent. It was so lifelike that you could easily mistake it for the real thing, the prince. The king placed the statue in the prince's private garden, and each day when the prince would go into the garden to study, he would look lovingly at the statue. Then one day he noticed that when he did this, his heart beat faster and his body tingled. Months had passed. Soon the people began to say to one another, the prince's back doesn't seem to be as crooked as it once did. When the prince heard this, his heart beat even faster. His body tingled even more. Now the prince began to go to the garden more often. He spent hours standing before the statue, studying it closely, meditating before it. Then one day, a remarkable thing happened. The prince found himself standing as straight as the statue. And so, as you know, as many fairy tales are, that story, it's kind of a parable for you and for me. We too were born 
to be a prince or princess. But we too had a defect that kept us from being the kind of person we were meant to be. And then one day, Jesus was born into our world. Jesus was born into our lives. And of course, Jesus is that perfect image of what you and I are called to be. Spiritually straight, he stands and beautiful. And when we look at him, we are in awe and wonder. But that's as far as our story goes. It's still unfinished, still incomplete. Whether we become like Jesus or not, that's still something to be decided. Whether our story will have a happy ending, like that story of the prince, something still to be decided. Which, of course, it begs the question, what can we do to help guarantee that our story will have a happy ending? And the answer to that is probably quite simple. We must do what the prince did. As the prince